welcome back to the watch. And Twitch is almost dead. It's nearly there. It's, it's on its last breaths. Oh, I feel like now, before it was slowly dying of like an internal disease, mm -hmm. and now everyone else is trying to kill it at the same time. So <laughs> I couldn't be happier. <laughs> All right, well, there's a number of reasons why I'm happy about this. It gives hope to us all. Mm. Yeah, and I want to elaborate more on that later. Why, why does it give hope to me who is not on Twitch? This is important, okay? But before we get there, Twitch, from all reports, has been a pretty garbage platform for quite a while now. Yes. I, I could be wrong, but I feel like it's once they sold out, the mm. original people who made it, once they sold it to someone else, then obviously a big corporate company comes and ruins everything mm. because they're just a money-making machine. Well, Amazon owns Twitch, mm. and it seems like they don't give a crap about it. Like, uh, Amazon makes all its money from, you know, Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, does, like Twitch is like, pfft, whatever. It's, it was uh, almost, I don't know, an indulgence on their behalf. And it's bizarre because Twitch had potential back in the day. Yeah. It, it could have even have been a YouTube rival. Like, if they wanted to make it better, but they made mistake after mistake, got worse and worse, and, like, things that have been really bad on Twitch, like the revenue split has been garbage, and uh, this is that's a significant part to why it's currently dying. There would be streamers where, in a stream, accidental things would happen, or the wrong word would be dropped, or something like that, they'd get banned, and then there would be these girls who yeah, literally show, you know, mm. their breasts and stuff. Nothing and like, to the imagination. Yeah, and only get suspended for a short time or not even punished. Like yeah. the, the moderation was so sometimes heavy handed, but arbitrary and biased, like it, garbage, absolute dog crap. And then the fact that it was very ideologically driven in terms of what was allowed and what not and other things. So Twitch has been garbage for a good long while, but people still streamed there. They had lots of followings yet now. More recently, it's done two things that one big thing that really ticked off a lot of people. So they tried to update their terms of service where they almost were going to ban third party sponsors. Yeah. <clears throat> Insanity. So it's like, sorry, that means a, a streamer couldn't have like a dedicated sponsor in their videos and they were even restricting it being out of it, like sponsorships appearing on screen. I think it was like 3%, which is about that much space in the whole stream yep. that could be sponsored. And the theory was that their goal with this was to force people to be part, to join up with their in-house kind of sponsorship program, mm. which meant Twitch would be... Like, we have these sponsors. If you sign up to this group, you would get sponsored then, but Twitch gets a cut of it. Yeah. Whereas they weren't getting a cut of all these other sponsorships. It's insane. It's, it was greedy, money-grubbing, anti-creator. They don't care about their creators. And uh, that ticked off a whole heck of a lot of people. And then there was a more recent um, uh, little update where they basically, they were... It, it wasn't really a gift, but they were trying to say, look, we're, we're doing something to support our creators where they were offering a better revenue split to mm. streamers. But it turned out it was only if you had a certain amount of people watching your stream or something like that, if you had a certain amount of revenue as a result, which only benefits the top one of the 1% or something like that. Yeah. And most streamers, nothing changed. I also saw that they there's weird rules where like they would do the 30-70 split and 50-50. So they say, okay, if you're under a thousand K revenue, you'll mm. get the 70, 30, but once you're over that, so a bigger creator, we go back to the 50, 50 split. Oh, like, I thought it was reverse. I thought only the bigger ones got the better for split. I don't, they keep changing it. Shad, honestly, there's like different programs as well. Like on YouTube, they're just the partner program, mostly yep. monetization where with Twitch, they've got like these different levels mm. or tiers of how you make money. I think they're also trying to restrict multi-streaming. Yeah. That was another thing. Would, so you could stream on Facebook, you could stream mm. on Twitter, all that fine. But Twitch, you can't. Yeah, so like that simultaneously. And yeah. so, but Twitch, it seemed like if you were streaming on Twitch, they wanted to restrict your ability to stream anywhere else. Yes. Yeah. And so, very anti creator here. Yeah. And, uh, and so, people have been really getting ticked off. And at the same time, all these problems are happening. There's another platform, which is basically a clone of Twitch, but with better terms of service and a better cut for the creators called Kick. Mm. And as a result, heaps of people have just been leaving Twitch, jumping ship, and going over to Kick. And this is the part that gives me hope. This is the, my favorite part about this. Because it shows that 
it is possible for one of these large social, you know, um, media platforms to die. It is possible for most of the fan base to abandon it and move and migrate. Because this is one of the biggest problems with alternative platforms is no one's migrating to them. Mm. But it also shows the reasons why in a big thing. And when I say migrating, Kick has a lot of money. Um, the people who make it, uh, who are funding it and making it, they're basically uh, like Bitcoin investors with all this money and stuff. And uh, they have signed up with some big money deals to some of the bigger streamers. Like I think one is called XQC yeah. and the contract is like bonkers. Oh, was it 70 million or something? Was, I think it's more than like most NBA players it's, like start that's, off that's with. It's crazy. It's uh, insane. And it's not even exclusive, but this is what, like if you give people a good service, you, I, they don't need to lock them in because I'll choose the platform anyway, because Kik is offering a better revenue split. I think it's 70, 30, like mm. YouTube. You don't need a force exclusivity because if people are making more money on the platform, they're going to do that. That's also the problem with the migration thing is the money thing. If you're making more money on a certain platform, guess which platform are you going to stay on? That platform. Exactly. Even if there are alternatives. Kick has offered better money split for people than, than Twitch. You, there, there are the results. That's how it works. And more recently... <laughs> They even signed with a very big deal. I, had, I haven't heard what the money figure was, but they have confirmed that they've signed a contract with them. The Queen of Thoughts herself, Amaranth, has signed up with Kick. Wow. <laughs> That's saying something, that too. That is saying like, something. Like, there must be lots of money in that oh, one. Oh. Yeah. And so that means even not just the gaming and stuff, the thoughts will start migrating. Like, and that's where the money is, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. where they'll go. Twitch is dead. <laughs> if, you got, if they lose the thoughts, that's all they got left. They're gone. Oh, my gosh. I also heard weird things, too. Apparently, some of the, the CEO of Stuff and Kick, they want to find ways to be sustainable enough to give certain creators a salary. Oh, wow. Like ones wow. maybe who aren't as big or who like are moderate that don't know if they want to jump ship onto like full time. Mm -hmm. Like cool things like that where it's like, man, if YouTube was able to say, okay, we'll pay you this much this year for a contract, just and like it doesn't matter how many views you get or how often you stream, here is your salary. For creators, that's like so, that's so much security. <laughs> it is. Like that's one of the worst things about YouTube is that we don't have security on this platform. Ad revenue just drops off a cliff one month and mm. they're like, oh gosh we've lost heaps of money and we can't cover the bills. It's only thanks to our supporters that we're able to keep going. Um, so YouTube is really awful about that. I, it seems like the people behind Kick are also, they allow more on the platform in terms of diversity of thought, let's just say. Right. I, don't, I don't think that they're full free speech advocates, but they're better than Twitch by the sound of it. Again, and that's another huge I mean, it's not hard because Twitch is I know, pretty Twitch bad. is awful. <laughs> like, just be level-headed and you'll be fine. You can beat Twitch and, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that shows that these social media platforms are not, you know, undefeatable. Mm. Uh, that they can die and people are willing to migrate. And that gives me hope. But as I said, and we've kind of pointed out, it, we now see the reason, which has been the problem with the, uh, you know, alternatives to YouTube and everything. It's about the money. Even though uh, ad revenue doesn't cover all of our costs now because it's gone so far low, it still comprises the larger portion of our revenue and we are reliant on it in that sense. Mm. Um, and so we need to be on YouTube, uh, we, like alternatives. And we are on um, uh, Odyssey, Odyssey and, and uh, Rumble um, and, and Player. Okay, three alternatives right there. Though I think the, uh, it's supposed to auto-upload, and I think Night's Watch actually gets skipped sometimes on Rumble, so I need to check that. But we should be on there. We don't promote it, okay, because we need the views where I'm making the money. <laughs> we need the views on YouTube because it makes money. Mm. If Rumble and, uh, and Odyssey want to be viable alternatives to YouTube, that's the key. You've seen it. It could work. You could have people fully jump ship off of YouTube if there's the money to incentivize it, okay? They have the um, management and free speech stuff that supports it, like so much better. And you, and that's why people get really upset with YouTube. That's why I get ticked off with YouTube because arbitrary censorship, demonetization, and stuff that just 
aren't allowed and bullcrap stuff where questioning the results of certain elections or whatever, right? And they've rolled that back on YouTube. Now you're allowed to because they're expecting that uh, the Democrats are going to lose the next election and there's going to be a lot of people questioning the results then. Uh, see how freaking biased that is. Yeah. It's just outrageous, right? And, uh, and uh, like, YouTube are not the arbiters of truth. If anything that has taught us on, from recent years that mainstream truth gatekeepers are full of crap where they said, you know, certain lockdowns are necessary and uh, certain medical procedures and all those things, right, where they came down like a fist on anyone wanting to just question, not even saying I did, I just wanted to do more, do more research, mm. came down like a hammer. And so disgusting that YouTube had that level of censorship and control and all that stuff and we're penalizing people who just want to speak out. But even not just that, even people like us on Night's Watch that are more conservative and, you know, have a more conservative kind of lens and we push back against the woke stuff. Well, you know, we know what YouTube thinks about this type of stuff and we've seen other channels get punished for it. And so I would love to say screw off YouTube if I could. And I, at one point I was wondering, could it ever happen? Yet. Twitch. Twitch has died and it gives me hope. So it, it, we could, you know, it means it's possible that a large migration of users and creators would be more than willing to just see a YouTube if we had a viable alternative. Rumble and Odyssey are just not there yet. Mm. They don't have the monetization. And even on Rumble, it's weird how they report their views. Like, um, there's just some questions that multiple creators have noticed. Like, for instance, Certain views on certain live streams are really big, but when you look at the likes on those views, the ratio is nowhere near what it should be. And right. so on average, um, you usually get, is it like 10% on average on YouTube? I'm trying to think. When I have a 100,000, yeah, on average, 100,000 view video, 10,000 likes is good, but it's more common, maybe 8,000 likes yep. versus the views. And so around 10, even 8% around there is about the like ratio to view ratio on rumble. No, it's like two, 1%. It's like, well, hang on. And it makes you suspect that these aren't legitimate views that they mm. might be counting a view as like, you know, when you go on a screen, things autoplay, it might count be counting that and stuff. And that's not good. No. That's not good. That's uh, that's uh, pumping the numbers as they were. Um, but rumble is trying to be an alternative, but the thing is YouTube's ad, you know, AdSense integration is top tier. It's really good. The cut 70. I'm not like, I'm not opposed to 70, 30 on ads. I think that's yeah, fair. Yeah. I think 70, 30 on, um, super chats and memberships is complete dog crap. Mm. Cause that's like memberships. YouTube takes 30% of that. And, uh, Subscribe star and player only take 5%. That's the difference. Like, wow. And so I think that's absolute bullcrap. YouTube's taking that much. But for uh, ad revenue, I think it's, yeah, that's fair. Mm. I'm willing to accept that. I'm just curious with YouTube because I've noticed more and more ads are playing on videos. Yes. And I think with a user experience, there comes to a point where I'm getting kind of sick. <laughs> like, it started with two ads. One would play automatically after the another. Yeah. And I've gotten three at one point. Mm. Like, like, Especially with longer videos too, mm. I get interrupted. I know like the, the person making mm. that can put ads in, but. I mean, when you have control of a channel and you're monetized, you can select how many ad spots you put in between a video. Mm. Um, but also if you don't, YouTube will automatically put ads on a video. And uh, if I upload a video, right, and I don't do the metadata and I, and I just do it later and I come to it, it's crazy. I then get to go to the ads to assign how many, and YouTube's already put ads on, and they just pump them. That YouTube automatic ads, they just load them in. It there's mm. ridiculous amounts. Like we're talking, I don't know, on like a twenty minute video, sometimes ten ads, right? And on a twenty minute video, I'll only do three at most. <laughs> like, like, yeah, it, it's garbage that YouTube really tries to inflate that as much as possible. And then the fact that YouTube is monetizing all content, even if you're demonetized, they will monetize your videos and take it. That, oh, it's scummy as. So you, like, YouTube is doing lots of scummy things, mm. right? And there's no viable alternative really yet. I'm hoping there will be. 
But until there is, we're kind of stuck there. But like I said, it gives me hope because now we've seen clearly that if there is a viable alternative, that we can, you know, it's seen that we can make, you know, support ourselves and make our money on other platforms. Yeah. And by the way, like if we had enough community support that we could re be fully reliant on uh, memberships and supporters instead of ad revenue, that means, yeah, like YouTube isn't as necessary a thing. And living on the other platforms might be an option to consider if things go really pear-shaped on YouTube, but we're not there yet, not, mm -hmm. not by a long shot. So anyway, it's an interesting thing that's happening. I'll watch Kit closely because right now they're yeah. in the like peak investor time period. They're buying all the stuff. Yeah. Once it starts needing to make money and it's a bit more mature, that's when we'll start seeing whether or not they actually have the yeah. infrastructure to, because YouTube, although we hate ads, it works enough for them mm. to be making money. And same with Twitch. Well, because there was the Microsoft attempted the um, Mixer. Yeah, that and did that not fell. last very but long. <laughs> Kick seems to be much better situated yeah. than Mixer. Because um, one of the problems with Mixer, they, they signed up all these big names, but no one came, went over to watch. Yeah. But it seems like a lot of people are migrating to I Kick. I think there's also a good timing that Kick came in because mm -hmm. they've been, the whole thing with Kick, I feel like they've been kicking Twitch's butt for the last <laughs> little while. Each time they, they do something that's controversial, Kick's like, well, we don't do that. You should just come over this way. <laughs> Where Mixer's just like, we are Microsoft, we are streaming, come mm -hmm. and join us. Like, it, it, yeah, it was Kick, more corporate. Yeah, Kick really is building that momentum yeah. now. And especially with the big amount, like every, it's been... Everyone's talking about it, really, because when with the whole crap that Twitch is doing, all the things and migration stuff, kick, everyone's talking about kick, yep. which just spreads people's awareness of it, which increases the likelihood of them going over. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I hope it continues. Good luck, kick. I hope you remain a good platform and it gives hope to us all. And uh, we'll see what happens. So, as always, stay on watch.